So I'm very honored to be the one of the panelists today among like all these well-known people in EDA. Today I will talk about this um, our work which got Best Paper Award in Toda US last year, which is regarding an energy-aware online learning framework for resource management in heterogeneous platforms. Um, first, I will give you a brief uh, background of imitation learning because our work is based on imitation learning or the proposed framework is based on imitation learning. And then I will describe our work, which is online imitation learning for dynamic resource management. Imitation learning is a supervised machine learning framework that aims to imitate an expert or oracle. So this kind of learning framework or this imitation learning is very suitable for sequential decision making problems. Now, by sequential decision making problems, we mean that at each and every time step, we have to make some decision. So let's say here in this figure in the x axis, we are showing the time from t1 to t15. And we have uh, six decisions available D1 to D6. If we need to take a decision at each uh, time step, let's say at T1, we make a decision D2, at T time T2, we make decision D5 and so on and so forth. And at the end of T15, all these decisions result into some performance metric. Let's say um, in, in, in case of uh, a heterogeneous mobile platform where we have more than one processors, then the decisions can be how many processors need to be switched on. And at the end of uh, at the end of your time horizon, or in this case it is T15, maybe there is a uh, total energy consumption. So this decision needs to be taken in such a way that the total energy consumption is minimized, or let's say total latency is minimized. So imitation learning is very good in these decision-making problems where there is an end objective which has to be optimized. It can be uh, minimizing latency or it can be maximizing energy efficiency or it can be anything. So there are multiple steps involved in this imitation learning framework. The first step is to collect demonstrating exam demonstration examples and then you have to generate Oracle and then the third step is learn the Oracle. I will, I will give you uh, in details of each, each and every step. Now, each step of the application is executed with all possible combination of decision to obtain the cost. Now, that means that at each time step, we, we can run our application with all possible decision and at the end, we will get the performance metric. It can be anything, it can be energy latency, it can be energy efficiency. Now, if we want to, uh, run this exhaustive search, or if you want to run this exhaustive simulation, then the complexity is very high, right? So this Oracle policy maps this input state to the optimal decision. It generates a sequence which optimizes a given objective function. Now, in the previous example, you saw, you saw that uh, at each time step, we can take uh, multiple decision from a set of decisions, right? Now, there, there, will, there exist only one series of decision which will give uh, the best metric, which will give the best performance metric. So the Oracle policy maps, or Oracle policy is the policy which is the, which is which corresponds to the series of those optimal decisions. Now that is function of system state, means after taking each decision, your system state is changing. So at T1, if you take decision D2, then at in the beginning of T3, which is in the next window, your system state changes. Is, uh, is something different. I will again give, uh, tell you in detail what are the system states. Now, given this Oracle policy, imitation learning uh, trains or learn a policy which is approximate to the Oracle policy. And the primary reason behind that we have to learn the Oracle policy is we cannot make the Oracle each and every time because we may not have the storage or we, can, we may not have the uh, uh, latency or the energy budget to make those Oracle policy each and every time. So IL policy uses that Oracle policy to make a, make a suboptimal policy or make approximation to the Oracle policy. And to make the IL policy, any supervised learning methodology can be used. Like we can use linear regression, we can use decision tree, neural network, etc. Now I will go um, over our proposed um, dynamic power management method. Now our work is targeted to minimize the energy consumption of cell phone. 
so i mean all of us use uh, cell phone and all of us want our cell phone to work in very fast or and take very less energy that means the user experience has to be very very good you if you hit one app and then that app has to open in like in that moment itself now uh, usually our cell phones have multiple processors like uh, it may be octa core processor it may have quad core processor so uh, we should not or the cell phone companies when they uh, build the chip they also have power management policies now those power management policies uh, try not to uh, switch all the cores available in the cell phone on all the time because it will it will then consume more power than expected right and it will drain our battery you have to uh, charge your cell phone again and again recently maybe you, many of you know that um, samsung's phone was um, like was getting heated up and it hit the thermal random problem and it it had damage hopefully there is no people from samsung here uh, so usually the default governors uh, which are uh, implemented in the cell phone they use utilization to control the frequency means if the phone utilization is very high then they increase the frequency so that all the tasks or all the jobs in the phone uh, can be finished but they don't exploit the information about the workload they don't exploit whether the workload is memory intensive or the workload is compute intensive and so on and so forth which leads to suboptimal operation in terms of energy efficiency as well as energy con consumption we had our previous approach dipo which uses performance counter which that means it is using the information about the workload to achieve better operation which beats performance of default governors but dipo prunes runtime configuration only down to five options means if we have if we can take let's say 20 decisions at 20 different types of decision in the runtime dipo considers only five of them it only considers five decisions in the runtime and it takes one of those five decisions we overcome these challenges using an imitation learning approach in this approach the runtime policy is free to choose any configuration as a function of workload and this work this work was a collaboration with professor jana dopa and partha pratim pandey from washington state university now i will go uh, step by step uh, how we uh, how our framework works our framework consists of five uh, five key steps first one is instrumentation and the second one is data collection so for instrumentation uh, we need to first uh, we are first uh, instrumenting the applications with puppy api and llvm to collect a uh, few application level parameters like instruction data cpu cycles branch miss prediction level to cache misses data memory access non cache external memory request so these are the application level parameters which um, we collect i think there is a question in the chat oh okay um and also we uh, we also collect the system level parameters like per core cpu frequency per core cpu utilization little big gpu dram power consumption number of active cores and execution time as well so this is the step where we perform the instrument workload instrumentation and collect the data so the data is nothing but the characteristics of the application while we change the characteristics of the device now when we say that characteristics of device is changing that means we are switching on or switching off some cores we are changing the frequency of cores etc now the second step or the rest of the steps involve the oracle construction and policy design and then experimental evaluation from the data from the collected data when we uh, characterize the application under different uh, device configuration from those data we construct the oracle again the oracle is the best policy which minimizes certain objective from the oracle we design the il policy and as a reminder the il policy can be designed from any of the self um, learning technique like these entry neural network linear regression etc and then that policy can be used to uh, run with any of any other application so this is the this is our high level overview of our framework next i will uh, go into the details of the workload instrumentation now when we instrument the workload we need to we need to remember that we we shouldn't uh, 
we shouldn't instrument or we shouldn't characterize the workflow in such a way the characteristics um, of uh, of the workload or the data of the workload changes um, with the uh, change in device configuration. Now, when I say characteristics of workload changes means, uh, let's say the instructions retired. Now, the instructions of certain workload uh, should not change with the device characteristics. Even if uh, we have two cores on versus four cores on, the instructions retired should be same. That's why we divide the workload in such a way that each division or each part of the workload has constant um, number of instructions. But that means no matter what, uh, how many cores or what is the uh, operating frequency of the device, the number of instructions required for each of these uh, snippets, we call it snippet, is remains same. That's how we are we are instrumenting the uh, workload so that. We, we can make power management decision for each of the snippet of the workload. Now for each um, workload snippet, we collect the application level parameters as well as the system level parameters as I was showing earlier. Then we perform the offline characterization. That means we run benchmarks at different core and frequency configuration. And in this case, we are um, considering the Samsung Exynos uh, uh, development board where there are uh, four little core and four big core. That's why all the configuration ranges from one little one big core to four little four big core. Then we sweep the frequency from uh, 0.6 gigahertz to 0.2 gigahertz on the scale of 0.2 gigahertz. So this leads to 128 configuration. And we profile total 18 benchmark, which leads to total 4,467 distinct workload snippet. And time spent for one benchmark is about one to two hours. Now with this uh, huge amount of data, we need to construct the Oracle policy. Now, again, as a reminder, we have a set of possible configuration, which is denoted by set C here. The configuration at sample K is a tuple. Now, again, this sample K is nothing but we can think that is the workload snippet. The tuple consists of a number of little core, frequency of a little core, number of big core, and frequency of big, big core. That means it's in each snippet we can execute with uh, one with this tuple. The set of all snippets in an application is denoted by set S, and the snip, snippet K is uh, SK, which belongs to S. So the goal of the Oracle policy is to find the optimal configuration for each of the snippet. And this optimal configuration will um, construct the Oracle policy. Now, as I was mentioning earlier, the optimization objective can be anything like it can be energy, it can be performance per watt, it can be latency, and so on and so forth. Now, this Oracle policy gives the optimal trajectory. Again, for an example, let's say we have capital N number of snippets for an application, and we and there are capital M number of distinct configuration for the for the platform, then the Oracle should give the optimal trajectory. In this case, the J denotes the cost. And when we say this J31 star, that means um, this particular trajectory gave us the optimal cost. So in general, to get this optimal cost, we need an ex exhaustive search, which is very much computationally in intractable. So to, to overcome this challenge, we propose a dynamic programming based approach to obtain the optimal energy oracle. So we can, uh, we can describe or we can express the energy till k snippet uh, with this expression where we consider the power consumption multiplied by the execution time with each snippet. And then the switching overhead, if we uh, switch between one configuration to another between two snippets, then they uh, incur some overhead. So with that power consumption latency and the switching overhead, we can express the energy till k snippet. With that expression, we can obtain the optimal energy starting the k snippet with this, uh, with this uh, expression. And then once we obtain the optimal energy consumption, then we opti obtain the optimal trajectory using dynamic programming optimality equation. Now, one thing to note is we can uh, implement or we can apply dynamic programming in this case because energy is an additive function. 
but if it is a ppw if it is performance per watt then performance per watt or ppw is not an additive function in that case we apply a greedy search to obtain a suboptimal o rating now so far i have discussed how we are obtaining the oracle next i will discuss how we are performing the imitation learning with the oracle so the first step first step is construct the offline policy where we obtain the oracle and then we train um, we train a policy with maybe it's a decision tree or linear regression so that's how we are constructing an offline policy then the offline policy will be executed uh, on chip or it will be executed on chip um, then uh, when it is executed on chip then it makes some decision we can at the same time we can also keep track of the optimal decision and if the optimal decision and the decision taken is not correct then you can retrain the policy this is, that is how our overall online imitation learning framework works one big challenge in this framework is how to get the optimal decision on chip because that time we don't have access to all other configurations and the power consumption and the energy consumption occurring from all other configurations so that's why uh, one possible one possible solution is to have the power performance model which can give the possible or which can estimate the power performance of, with all other configurations but the challenge is even if we have the power performance model we can have uh, an offline power performance model trained with some known workload but then that those power performance model which are trained with known workload may not work good with a new workload so that's why online or on chip we are also updating the power performance model with the recursive least square based approach again as i was mentioning that the models which are constructed with application sim so far may not be applicable or may not good may not provide good estimation with the uh, new applications which are coming online so that's why and also since uh, we are relying this power performance model to get the oracle online it is very important to maintain accurate power performance model to maintain this we are updating the power and performance model online with recursive this square based approach now with from the power performance model we are obtaining the oracle and the oracle is nothing but the best decision at that particular snippet if the best decision at that particular snippet doesn't match with uh, with the decision which is taken then the training data is stored in a buffer so in this case we store 100 training data at once and if the buffer is full then we retrain the policy and um, since we are we are storing only 100 data the storage requirement is very less also the execution time overhead uh, is less too we compare the convergence of our imitation learning approach with a very popular machine learning technique known as reinforcement learning which needs uh, no introduction and we observe that um, it uh, converges way faster than reinforcement learning policy like reinforcement learning policy maybe takes um, thousands of snippets to convert but our imitation learning based policy takes only 5 6 snippets to convert we are also showing the normalized energy consumption with respect to oracle as you can see that the imitation learning based policy is uh, the normalized energy is almost same to the one so one means the best possible energy consumption whereas <coughs> excuse me whereas the rl based policy has a much higher energy consumption with respect to oracle we also compare our work with state of the art approaches which is dipo and another uh, default governor which is power safe governor and we observe that in both cases we are achieving uh, a significant improvement in normalized execution time as well as normalized energy consumption with uh, both single threaded and multi threaded uh, application so in our paper uh, which received the best paper in today yes we have detailed experimental e evaluation uh, if you are interested you can go and check the paper so in short we um, we could construct a low overhead online learning mechanism which converges fast and provides significant benefit in energy consumption for heterogeneous mobile platforms so yeah that's the end of my talk
thank you if you want to know more about my research you can go ahead and scan the qr code it will redirect to my website thank you and uh, i am open for any question yeah okay thank you very much for the very exciting uh, talk and uh, uh, anyone has questions okay uh, there is one question from rush uh, sumit can you see the question in the chat box yeah yeah so yeah. thanks ross for your question so you are asking how to support closed source pre compiled application can workload instrumentation be bypassed is convergence time related to the type of application input so uh, th these are very good question so as of now um, yeah the workload instrumentation cannot be bypassed so one possible solution is instead of uh, doing snippet based or workload conservative based instrumentation approach we can also divide the workload into a time basis so that means when we are applying the policy then we don't need to we don't need to uh, instrument or divide the workload like the way we divided in the offline phase so we can also apply the policy in a time basis in that case we don't need the workload instrumentation and is the convergence time related to the application inputs i would say yes because if the application varies uh, very, very much means if it is uh, like going from high power state to low power state very frequently then it can mess up the learning process so i think in that case it um, the convergence yes is dependent on the application type uh, does that answer your question ross uh, there's another question. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Ross. Uh, what parameters do we use in the uh, runtime modeling? Has the additional energy consumption caused by the proposed of? Yes, yes. We also uh, we also consider the overhead overhead both in terms of additional latency consumption. Uh, I mean, overhead both in terms of additional latency because to retrain and as well as to apply the power from a model there is additional latency and we also consider the additional um, energy consumption again for both of those operations there is an additional energy consumption. so both of those um, both latency and energy overhead is considered in the final result uh, what parameters do you use in the runtime modeling so by parameters uh, do you mean the uh, features or the parameters of the uh, model the learning model uh, oh features okay so i can go back to my slide i can show you the features um, yeah so these are the exact features the application level parameters whatever you are seeing in this table are the features we use instructions retired cpu cycles branch miss level to cache miss data memory access non cache external memory request we i also want to emphasize that if you if you want to use in some other platform which gives more which has probably more onboard sensor and which can give more features then yes you can definitely use more features 